Quite the scene in Columbus, Ohio today. Instead of being in the classroom, teachers there are on strike. This was supposed to be the first day of school, but the teachers union says this strike won't end until the district improves the school buildings, many of which don't have proper heat or any air conditioning. And as you'd imagine, the teacher shortage is also an issue there. It's led to larger class sizes and teachers having to cover more periods. This has a huge impact because it's a huge district with nearly 50,000 students impacted. Back here in Buffalo, as we prepare for back to school time, teachers aren't on strike, but they did have a rally this afternoon right in front of City Hall. A shortage of teachers is an issue here as well, with wages also a big concern. The Buffalo Teachers Federation has been in contract talks with the district since 2019. To on your side, Rob Hackford is live now at Niagara Square. And Rob, what did you hear from the teachers who showed up there today? Oh, Mike, they are angry and want to see this contract ratified as soon as possible and want negotiations to resume because, as Union President Phil Remorse said, they've only met around four times in the past three years. So they were outside City Hall renewing this plea, as we saw them do back in April as well. It's been a reoccurring theme and something we've seen often. But Union President Phil Remorse said while the demands for better pay benefits and teach, teaching conditions haven't really changed, he believes the environment that you just described around education, especially here in Buffalo, makes this year different and could see changes come soon. First, broadly speaking, as you mentioned, the national teacher shortage that's impacting Buffalo as well. Second, Buffalo Public Schools have a new superintendent, Dr. Tanja Williams, which they hope could further discussions and provide a refreshing view. And third is the district and union have both said BPS is in a much better financial position with some money in reserve and additional funding from the state expected than they were back in 2016 when they went through this process all over again. Now, Remorse said while the union has slightly lowered the amount they're demanding since BPS released their last proposal back in April, discussions with the district have all been through mediation. but. To Tomorrow, Remore said for the first time the union will be meeting with a fact finder. That's a new step in the union negotiation process, which is meant to provide an impartial view and have a report submitted with the goal of resolving an impasse just like this. And Remore hopes that the district and the fact finder consider that Buffalo teachers have to wait a lot longer until they reach max pay. Take a listen. Akron has a big district, right? It takes 20 years to get to maximum. It takes Buffalo teachers 27 years. Uh, Hamburg, 19 years to get the maximum. Takes Buffalo teachers 27 years. How about, here's a good one. How about Williamsville, 16 years, and you know what you get? The salary then is 100, over $100,000. Buffalo teachers feel that they deserve to be treated just as well, if not better than just teachers in the other school districts. Well, I did reach out to Buffalo Public Schools regarding today's rally and the status of negotiations, but so far I have not heard back. As for when the union and the school district will be back together or submitting a new proposal, Remorse said that will depend on when the fact finder releases his report. Michael? Rob Hackford reporting for us there. Rob, thank you. That teacher shortage of, is, of course, a concern nationwide, and we told you yesterday how more and more districts are considering a four-day week. Might that entice more people to enter the education field? There is a lot of debate out there over whether or not it's good for student performance. Well, I had the chance to talk exclusively with the president of the largest teachers union in the country, the National Education Association. We'll share part of that interview over the coming days, starting with my question to Becky Pringle today about this four day week. She says as long as teachers are part of the conversation, it may work in some places. We should be the ones who are talking about the solutions. We should be the ones who are involved in making those decisions that are best for our students and best for our public schools. If we do that, then we know that their voice is being heard, they are being respected, and those are the kinds of things that will help them stay in the profession and be attracted to the profession. Ms. Pringle said from what she's been told, most places that have switched to the four-day school week did so for reasons other than the teacher shortage.